morning service and evening service. It just seems like they all fit together to a certain extent. Talking about what we're going to see today here in Luke chapter 7, Jesus makes a statement uh, and he says, Wisdom is justified of all her children. And uh, that might sound kind of strange to us because we don't understand what he's talking about. Well, we're going to look at what leads up to what he says and uh, why he says it and what it means. So Luke chapter 7, we're going to start in verse number 19. <clears throat> verse number 19 says, And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. <clears throat> then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately, delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it was written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him, and the publicans, justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against them themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came, neither eating bread, nor drinking wine, and ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come, eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Let's pray. Father, we ask for your guidance now as we uh, look at this passage. Consider what went on and what Jesus was teaching, and what he wants us to know, what you want us to know. Lord, help us to learn to be wise, learn to have godly wisdom. Guide us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, we know, is the person who was to come, the Messiah that was promised by God. And when we look at when, Jesus and John, this is, this is what this passage is, is dealing with. Jesus, uh, Christ, and John the Baptist. John said, uh, let's, let's look at it. Go over to John chapter 3. John talks about himself. John talks about Jesus Christ. Of course, John, we know, was the precursor to Christ. He was preparing the way for the Christ who should come. John 3.33, um, John 3.30, John says, and, and he's talking about Jesus Christ. He says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Now, when we talk about increase and decreasing, it sounds like uh, you know, something becoming more or becoming less. And what he was pointing out was 
the Christ is to become more important to people, I will be taking a, a, a smaller place. Uh, basically what we'd say, I'm going to go in the back seat. Jesus, the Christ, was to increase in people's hearts and minds. They were to look to Him because He was the one who came to forgive their sins. He was the one who came to die for them. John was only there to point them to Jesus Christ. Go over to John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse number 35. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And um, verse 37, And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So what John did was to point them to Christ. Okay, and, and P Andrew, one of these two uh, men, uh, walked away from John and followed Jesus. And we know as time went on, he uh, was one of the apostles who followed Jesus Christ, and uh, along with uh, Peter, his brother. Now remember, John was in prison. Uh, in Matthew, it tells us that when, when this happened here in Luke chapter 7, when this happened was when John was in prison. And John, we, we don't know, the Bible does not tell us all the things that maybe John knew that God revealed to him. John knew, all, but we know this, he was to decrease and Christ was to increase. He was to be uh, diminished in his ministry. He may not have known that he was going to die. But he was in prison, and he sent his two di these two disciples to Jesus, I believe. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us either way. But what John tells them was to go to Jesus, this person, and find out if he is the one who is to come. Now, if you remember all the things, we're not going to go look at it. Remember everything that happened with John the Baptist. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit was in him from his mother's womb. And so he was filled with the Spirit. So when he saw Jesus and the Spirit of God coming upon Jesus uh, at his baptism, he recognized that Jesus was the Christ. Now, he is a human being, so it's possible that he may have had doubts as time went on. I don't believe he did. I believe what he is doing when he sent the disciples, his two disciples, to Jesus was for them to recognize that they were to stop following John. What was John going to do for them? Nothing except point them to Christ. So they were to step aside from him. John, we know, he, he died. He got his head cut off. We know he was going to be gone. And if they had kept following him, they would be, lost, they would, they would be uh, heartbroken like the people were when Jesus died. But for the people who were following John, there was not going to be a resurrection after three days. And so they would just continue to be heartbroken. But John was saying, I believe, go follow him because he's the one I'm pointing to. He is the one that I have been, been talking about, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. So follow him. And so that when they went to him, Jesus tells them, uh, just shows them his power and what he was doing. And he says, go tell John this. It wasn't so John could knew, know. It was for them to know this is the Christ. We don't know what John said to them. He just, all we know is they left. It's possible that John said, see, he's the one to follow. Stop thinking about me because I must decrease.
Jesus made it clear to the, uh, the disciples there of John that he was the one who was uh, promised. When he said this in verse number 22, go your way and tell John uh, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed. <clears throat> he was relating, he was uh, reminding them of what the Old Testament says. In Isaiah chapter uh, 61 and verse 1, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And this is talking about Christ. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel, or good tidings, unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And so he points out, basically, I am the Christ. And they are now to follow him. Go over to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21. And verse number 28. Jesus uh, had to, he dealt with the Pharisees a lot, right? And so he teaches them a lot of things. And we're going to see tonight that, that these Pharisees, you know, I, I said it to the Sunday school class, uh, don't miss today's message. And I'll say it to you, don't miss tonight's message. But uh, we'll see tonight that the Pharisees uh, are acting, or that's the way they were, is the way we'll see in the book of Ecclesiastes, a foolish king and what the, what a foolish king will do but I won't go on to that I'll do that tonight he says to the Pharisees and the religious people he says but what think ye a certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said son go work today in my vineyard he answered and said I will not but afterward he repented and went and he came, now the, the, the father, he said, he came to the second and said, likewise, go, and, go work in the field. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain, which, two, which of these two, he's telling the, the religious people, did the will of his father? And they say unto him, the first. Jesus said unto them, verily, truly, I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. He says, listen, these people who you considered evil and awful, they recognized their sin. They repented. But you are so foolish and still stuck on yourselves, you don't realize that you're in need also. Okay, so maybe you're not a publican. Maybe you're not a harlot. Maybe you're not evil like you consider evil in this world. But you are a sinner. And you need to repent of your sin because you are also lost. So the scribes and the Pharisees basically had their own agenda. They wanted... To do things their way and their way of what they believed the way of righteousness they were wrong now Jesus gives an illustration in uh, Luke chapter 7 and it's it's uh, starting in verse number 31, we read it. And when you, when you read it, you might think, okay, I don't get this. And just like we're going to see what it means, wisdom is justified of all our children. But here he says, these children in the marketplace, he says, whereunto then shall I liken the men of this gen generation? I'm going to show you what you are like, okay? The men of this generation. He's not talking about all of the people of the world. He's talking about these religious people. He says, I'll tell you what they're like. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another, saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. What is the purpose of them piping if they're not gonna, the kids are not not going to dance? Why am I doing this? He says, Listen, what he's telling them 
He says, you are just like children who, if they're not getting their way, you've heard the old saying, listen, I'm going to take my ball and go home. If you're not going to obey, if you're not going to do things my way, if you're not going to play the game my way, you don't have your own ball, so I'm going to take my ball. You've got to play my way if you're going to use my ball. The Pharisees saying, you're supposed to do things our way. And so Jesus says, you're just like little kids. We have, we have piped unto you, and you haven't danced. See, John and Jesus did not do things the same way the Pharisees did. Number one, the Pharisees were wrong. Number two, there's many ways of ministering. And we're going to look at that in a little bit. But John, Jesus said uh, that they were saying to about them that uh, John was a, was, had a devil. Look what he said. Verse 33, For John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking wine, and you say he hath a devil. Now, what did, what did John eat? Locusts and wild honey. John lived out in the wilderness. Uh, he was like what we might picture a hermit. Was there anything wrong with that? It was kind of strange, but nothing really wrong with it. And so he ate locusts and wild honey. And Jesus, though, when he ministered, he ministered to the publicans and the sinners. He would actually eat with them. And he would drink the, the, the things that they drank. And we know we say wine, but I, I understand what we consider wine is not what I believe he drank. Uh, uh, grape juice. That was their, that's where they got their, <laughs> their drink rather than, other, other than just water. So grape juice. And so he drank that, and, but they said he was a wine bibber. He was a drunk. And he was a glutton because he ate. Oh, wait a minute, what do you want? You, you, you complain about John because he didn't eat or drink. And you complain about Jesus. It doesn't matter what either one of them did. They didn't like, the Pharisees didn't like the message. And the message was saying, what the Pharisees and scribes are teaching you is wrong. Faith in Christ, God's grace is what's important. And they preach the kingdom of God. Now the message from John and Jesus were the same. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. They had the same message. They just did it two different ways. But either way was wrong for the Pharisees because they wanted people to follow their way. And this is what was, we can see that where it comes down to wisdom is justified of her children. And we'll look at that. Jesus basically saying, you expect John, the Baptist, and me to do things your way, to believe your way. And it's not right, we're not going to believe it. You know, we need to stand up for what we believe. There's a lot of things in this world that people uh, try to get away with and try to teach. Kids in, in schools today uh, have to put up with the what they teach as truth. I'm talking about kids who are in public schools. The public school will teach as truth that man came from some monkey someplace, uh, evolved into what we have. Now, they don't tell you how they evolved. They don't tell you how an eyeball evolves into an eyeball. And why do people have two eyeballs? Why don't we just have one? And, and as kids need to ask the questions, Teacher, why do we have two eyes? Well, because so we have depth perception. Teacher, how did we know we needed depth perception? Why don't we just have one eyeball? You know, the, 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 the questions that the kids could ask just need to be asked. You know, prove to me that you're telling me. To. My Bible says God created me. God created me the way he wanted me, in his image. Well, that's pretty easy. The messages we get today, we need to stand up against many of them. You know, God says this, and I believe God because you. I mean, I, I'm not telling kids, kids, listen, you be respectful. I'm not telling you to jump up and down in class saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. 
Now, you be nice to your teacher. Okay? They are deceived. Okay? You got to keep that in mind. But um, the messages, we need to stand up like Jesus and John did. The Pharisees, you're wrong. Something has happened from way back. These people, these Jewish people who are following the law all down through the ages twisted it. And you come up to this and no, 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 this is wrong. We need to understand what God is doing. And Paul dealt, we talked about it in Sunday school. Paul dealt with the law and said the law just points out you're a sinner. It doesn't fix things. It can't fix things. It just says you're bad. Okay, what are you going to do about it? Well, here's what God did about it because you can't do anything. God gave Jesus. And Jesus came. John says, hey, don't look at me. He's the one. He's God's fix. Follow him. And so both of them, though, taught that the kingdom of God is here. God is revealing his plan. You need to follow his plan. And there it is, Jesus Christ. The Pharisees didn't like it. So they didn't like either messenger because they didn't like their message. So Jesus tells them, your way basically is nonsense. Your way is going to get you straight thrown into hell because uh, you are not following what God says. So what we see in verse number 35, there is what Jesus says, but wisdom is justified of all her children. Follow Jesus. Follow John who points to Jesus. That's God's wisdom, God's truth that is being taught. The wisdom of God is seen in Jesus Christ. The wisdom of God as we follow it is seen in the results that are found in faith in Jesus Christ. The wisdom of the world, the wisdom of the Pharisees gets people thrown into hell because there's, there's no truth in what they're teaching. The truth is that God sent His Son Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the world so that when we put our faith in Him, when we understand that it's God's way, and the only way that anybody could ever pay for their own sins is by recognizing that Jesus did it for them. You cannot pay for your own sins. The Pharisees telling you, do this, do that. Uh-uh, not going to work. God made the way. And it's the wisdom of God. And a person who recognizes that, recognizes that God gives us His truth in the Scripture and says, I'm, on a, I'm going to accept it. I am accepting Him. That shows that I, or you who believe, have the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God then is seen in the results when a person comes to faith in Christ. The wisdom of the world Sees, is seen in the children that are produced or the fruit that is produced. It's like what Jesus said. A tree is known by its fruit. The results of any wisdom is seen what kind of wisdom it is in the fruit that is born. The fruit that is growing. Go over to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. There are many different ways to minister in the world. People are, who are missionaries go to a foreign country, maybe go to a foreign country that has a different language, learn the language, and they minister to the people. Uh, there might be somebody who is a, uh, a, a worker, who, who, a Christian who goes into prisons and ministers to prison uh, inmates. You know, it's not for everybody to do that. Some people have the ability and the, the desire to do that, and so they work in a prison. Does everybody have to work in a prison? No. And so uh, to expect everybody to be the same is not um, realistic. Mark chapter 9, look at verse number 39. Now let's look at verse 38. And John answering, um, sorry, where am I? Mark chapter 9, verse number 39. 30, Eight, right. And John, I'm, I, we've been talking about John the Baptist. This is John the Apostle. And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, 
and he followeth not, uh, not us. And we forbade him because he followeth not us. He's not with us. He's casting, out, he's casting out demons in your name, but he's not with us. Now, wait a minute. Jesus said something. He goes on. Jesus said, forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Listen, if he's doing it in my name, he's not doing it under his own power, his own name. He's not saying, I cast out you devil. No, he said, listen, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, remember in the book of Acts, there were men who, who did it, uh, tried to cast out a demon, but they said, in the name of uh, Christ who Paul preaches. What does that mean? I don't know him. <laughs> no, but if we do it in Christ's name, we're with him. Okay, because we know Christ. So it's, not, it's okay. So what, no matter what kind of ministry somebody has, as they follow Christ, they can minister in that way, whether it's a prison or, or a, a missionary someplace else or um, somebody who's working with drug addicts. Okay, they minister the same message in different ways. Paul um, had to deal with that in the book of Acts. Let's go over to the book of Acts and go to two different places. Acts chapter 16 First of all, a familiar place that we, we've seen when uh, Paul goes into the city of Philippi and uh, Luke, the writer there, tells us that this young woman uh, followed after Paul and his people and she proclaimed a message. Look at verse number uh, 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, listen, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Okay, she was a fortune teller. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Truth. Wow. Here is a woman, a girl, who is demon-possessed, teaching truth. Is that a proper method? What if we had a, uh, well, we had a, a special service last week, uh, Easter service. What if we had a, 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 a crystal ball of a fortune teller here t coming in and, and teaching us the Word of God? Does that make any sense at all? No. So Paul cast out this demon in the name of Christ. And so the, there's, the whole story goes on be behind it. But God says, this, is, this message is right. But the method is wrong. God does not want us to preach the truth in the wrong way. Go over to uh, Acts chapter, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 1. Paul again, he's preaching, he's teaching here, and he's saying, uh, listen, um, Christ is preached. He's not saying that anybody's doing wrong here. But there are some people who are not, you know, quite on the same page as Paul is. But they're preaching the truth of Jesus Christ, and he does not uh, condemn it. Chapter 1, verse number 14. And many of the brethren in the Lord, in the, keep that in mind, in the Lord. These are Christians, okay? Waxing confident by my bonds, he's in prison are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Wow. But then he goes on, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So he says there are people who are preaching, maybe not with the right heart and the right attitude, but they're preaching truth. They're still born again. They are in Christ, okay, in the Lord. So uh, as long as somebody is in the Lord and they know Christ, if they preach the truth, let them alone. But those who are outside of Christ trying to preach truth, that's a no-no. 
That's what we don't want, and that's what God does not want. But John and Jesus preached truth. They had the wisdom of God, and they showed the results in their ministry. God worked through them. Satan tries to deceive people. He does a good job of it. He deceives them into thinking their way is right. He was deceiving the Pharisees. They thought their way was right, and we know it was wrong. God has only one way of salvation, and it's His way. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Well, look, go over to John chapter 10. And look at verse number 27. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So he's very clear on that. And he goes on, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. When a person comes to faith in Jesus Christ, we become his sheep. And we know him. He knows us. And he holds on to us. We cannot be unsaved after we put our faith in Christ. It doesn't happen. My Father, he says, is greater than all. Some people will say, well, uh, no man is able to pluck them out of the, our, his hand, but if we do the wrong thing, we can lose our salvation because we're the ones. No, no, we're still a man, right? No, we can't do anything to lose our salvation. The only problem is we may not really have put our faith in Christ. Once we do know, we have put our trust in Jesus Christ, recognizing that Christ paid our penalty and we accept him by faith. That is real. We'll never leave. We will always be born again. But others who maybe have the thinking about being a, a Christian, if they never put their faith in Christ, look at verse number 5, right here in the same chapter. A stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And that works both ways. We who are born again, if we truly know Christ, we have the Holy Spirit within us, and he speaks to us and teaches us, listen, this is wrong. This teaching is wrong. Don't follow that teaching. Don't go that way. The opposite is true of the unsaved. They're, gonna, they're not going to follow Christ, really, because they don't know him. They're not going to follow him because they don't have the, the Spirit of God in them. And when a false teaching comes along, well, that sounds good. I talked to a guy at a fair. Uh, it's really sad. Uh, he, he was Mormon. And I was talking to him, and he asked me if I went to church. And, of course, I, I said, yeah, I'm Baptist. Uh, he says, I used to be Baptist, but I saw the light. I thought, wow, what do you mean you saw the light? I didn't ask him that. But I, after I left, got done talking to him, I got to thinking, you know, I, what I figure, and I, I've read that many of the Mormon uh, people who of the Mormon belief have gone away from Baptist religion. And he said, well, why? Why Baptist? Well, and I'm not just saying Baptist, okay? It's the, the truth, okay? Whether it's Baptist or um, somebody in a, in a church that's not called Baptist, whether it's uh, a community church, I'm talking about what the Bible says, okay? And it's not about Baptist, but what the Bible teaches is that salvation is so simple. <laughs> there used to be a, a tract. I don't understand why they call it this, but it's called God's Simple Plan of Salvation, and it was 20 pages long. But it is a simple way. God makes the way for people to be born again, saved, to have eternal life. And it is so simple that people take, it's hard for many people to believe that it's that simple. And when you find something hard, oh, 
that must be the way to go. So I go follow this way. No, 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 no. God doesn't make it hard. God makes it very simple. Because really there's no, if it's hard, you can't do it. Only God can do it. And he did it in Jesus Christ. Paid your penalty. And we put our faith in Christ and just relax. <laughs> our sins are paid for. You know, when you have a debt, let's say you buy a car and you don't pay cash. You owe, right? You lose your job. What happens? Well, you might lose your car. But you want the car. So now you're under pressure. I got to make my payments. And so you, and you worry about it, and you think about it, and you have to go find another job. You know, when we put our faith in Christ, it's over. You're saved. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have anything you owe. God did it all. And that's what people think, oh, no, it can't be that easy. Sure it can. You're talking about God. God loves. God has mercy and grace. It's all over the Bible, talking about God and His love for us. And so God's wisdom, like I said earlier, like a tree, is justified in the results that God's wisdom brings. God says, here's the truth. Use it. Take it. Accept it. And we accept it. We have eternal life. But the person who says, listen, here's what God wants you to do. Or here's what I believe God wants you to do. You've got to work for your salvation. You've got to do this, do this, do this, do this. And what, what happens when people do this, do this, do this, do this, and, and step aside from the Scripture, and they end up doing all of these things, they are the results of the false wisdom. They are lost because of what God tells us here. Christ came to change our hearts. Christ came to show us that He obeyed the law perfectly, and when he died on the cross, it was our death. We pay, he paid for our sins. And his message was just accepting God by faith, just relaxing in what G God did for us through Jesus Christ. To repent is just to recognize, hey, I'm wrong and I have sinned. I need to turn away from the way I'm going and go to God's way. Follow him. And until a person has the Holy Spirit in his heart by faith, they'll never understand that God loves unconditionally. God loves all people and gave his Son for all people, not just for a few, not just for some. He gave for all, but not all accept, but not all come to faith in Christ. Wisdom is justified of all her children. The truly wise people are those who recognize God's truth and accept God's truth. We looked at the book of Proverbs a while back, several years ago it seems like, and we found out that wisdom uh, from God will produce in people the understanding of God's way of salvation. Those who come to faith in Christ are wise, but those who reject Christ are not wise. God's wisdom is seen in the results that it brings people to faith in Christ. What the Bible teaches, not what some man teaches. Salvation is what God wants for each one of us through faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your wisdom, for your truth. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us to recognize that we need to follow you. Lord, if there's anyone here who does not know that if they died today, they'd go to heaven, I pray that you would speak to their hearts, help them to understand that it's a matter of just recognizing what you have done for them in Jesus Christ, your Son. Coming to earth and fulfilling the law, dying on the cross.
for our sins, not for his own. Lord, it's what you have done. It's not, it's not a matter of a cross being used, but it's a matter of what you did while Jesus was on the cross. You took our sins, placed them on him so that he paid the death penalty for us. Lord, thank you for your goodness and for your love, your promises. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.